In this video, we learn about sport kites, fly one, and how they can be a great addition to your RVing experience. So let's get started. You know, many campers are always looking for that unique gift for fellow RVers. Yes, there's many ideas like games or camping products, but has anyone thought of giving a kite to a fellow camper? Welcome to Dorm Beach, located in Bodega Bay, California. This two mile stretch of pristine beach not only includes 120 campsites, but is also a great location to learn about kites. Kites come in all shapes and sizes, but what they have in common is that they take very little space to store them, which makes them a great camping activity for your RVing experience. One of the most popular and fun kites to fly is the sport kite, so I asked my son Andrew if he could show us how to assemble, fly, and his reasons why he loves to fly this type of kite. Like RVs, kites have many different names. This particular model he's going to show is called a Thunderstruck. So let's go ahead and bring out the Thunderstruck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open it up. Right inside the top, you'll find the line set. The line set is a two-line line set of braided polyester, 65 feet. And now we'll roll out the kite. So it's always best, if you can, to have a flat surface to do this. It's a little tough out on the beach or out on grass. Um, if you are in heavy wind, you always want to keep what we call the leading edge in the wind. So that would be this edge right here. It's the same on the other side as well. Now the Thunderstruck, since it is so wide, we have two lower spars as well as a single leading edge spar. And then as well as that, we have extended wings. So Right here, what you'll see is a bend in that material. What that is, is you have a smaller tube and a larger tube. The smaller tube is going to be inserted into the bigger tube. As you make sure that's all the way in, there's a little nub on the end. You'll see a little notch right at the end of the tube. That's where this little bungee comes in. This little bungee goes right around that little notch and into it. And what that does is it holds the pressure of this tube into the other tube. So that's gonna give you your full wingspan, that full leading edge, right? So I'm gonna do the same on the other side, right? You'll see that bend. I'm gonna slowly push the rod end in. And I'm gonna simply take my fingers and line it up. You'll feel a smaller tube and a bigger tube and that smaller tube goes into it and you feel it stop. Then what you do is you go ahead, find that notch at the other side, have your bungee, and go ahead and pull that bungee into that leading edge. I always put in my lowers first because that's what's gonna create the size of the kite. Now, on these spars, there is a tag. There's a gold tag. It says this end into center T. So right on this kite, there is a center T. And I'm gonna push this end into the center T. And then all I'm gonna simply do, I'm gonna put this grommet here down, facing down so that it's ready for the leg. Now I'm gonna pull the right grommet and I'm going to insert the fiberglass tube into the right grommet. So now I'm gonna do the left side I'm gonna put this end into the center T, like it says. I'm gonna rotate it so the grommet is facing downwards. And then I will insert it into the leading edge grommet, right? So now what I'll do is I'll take this leg and I'll pull it, pull the material and stick the rod end into the grommet, just like that. So I'll do it again on the right side, push down on the material, you're not gonna hurt it, and just like that. Now, when you see this material, 
these grommets want to be facing straight up perpendicular to your horizon, right? So that's how you know that your kite is going to have its maximum airfoil. And then what we will do is we will add in our top spar. So again, the leading edge spar goes into run one grommet all the way and then into the second grommet all the way. And so when you pick up the kite, you want to be sure that these bridles are over the tee, not under the tee. Make sure that's over not under and also make sure the top of the bridle is over the grommets on the top you don't want it under the grommets we want it pulling straight out so that is how to create the kite so now we're going to show you how to install the lines on this reel there's a bungee so that bungee is in the top so you just pull that out a little nook there and what I always do is I take the bungee in my hand and I hold the wrapper. So now I have both lines. At this point, you'll see on the end of the line, a blue and a red. So that red is right, red, right, okay? And how we do this is we use what's called the Jacob's knot. So what you'll see is you'll see a large loop at the top. I'm going to put my two fingers, my index and thumb, pull it out, and then I'm going to pull the line up and over, and that's going to create a loop right there. That little loop is going to slide up and down. That is the loop that we are going to put over our side here. So, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to simply put the not through the loops that we created earlier and what you're going to do is you're going to grab you're going to pinch down past the knot pull it down so it's tight and then pull it all the way down onto that knot at the end and that's going to secure and that's not going to loosen while you fly that's why we use the jacobs knot um, so i'll do the same thing on the left side I have my bridle end right here, ready to go. I simply take the loop, put my index and thumb out, wrap around, and pull the ends through. So again, put the finger and thumb in, go around, and grab those two, and pull it up. And that creates that Jacob's knot loop. That loop is what's gonna go on the knot on the bridle, okay? So that bridle goes there. I hold this, hold the knot, pinch the knot, and hold the bridle, and hold it past the knot so that the Jacob's knot is nice and even, right? And then pull it down towards the end. And that's how you attach your line set to your kite. So you are ready to go and fly. So the Delta wings are an awesome uh, design because if you're at a beach you can just put the end in and let it sit now if you're flying at a park I would suggest bringing you know some ankle weights with you or something just just a little rock to hold the the tail edge down now what I'm gonna do here at the beach is I'm just gonna put some sand on the end now you would think that that would ruin it but it doesn't it just gives it a little bit of weight so that it doesn't fly up while you're putting out the lines. So now I'm gonna go ahead and walk 65 feet that way and I will meet you at the end of the lines. When you're done taking out your lines, you'll notice there's a little twist in them, right? Now we only have two lines, so we're super lucky. So all we have to do, if we start unwinding and we go, wait, hold on, that's too wound, wound we just go the other way right we want the red on our right we want the black on our left now this guy goes in our back pocket ready to fly it's a great place to hold your line winder so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this loop I'm gonna put my wrist in and grab 
right? The other side, I'm gonna put my wrist in and I'm gonna grab down. Now, very simply on this kite, all you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down and back and that's gonna get it up. There we go, there it is. There you can hear it. And it's loosening up. Oh yeah. Just gotta keep it going. Just find where that gust likes to live. It's all about finding that wind going across. And also learning how to keep it level with the land. You know, that's when it looks really, really nice is when you go across the land. There's also another trick that I like to do, which is called the Jacob's Ladder. So that's when you rock back and forth like that and the kite kind of climbs the next rung. It's kind of a fun little trick. Very easy to do. Um, you can do dive bombs and dive outs, right? Everybody goes, well, how long is this kite gonna last? You know, we go to Dollar Tree and we get those little kites for the kids and they don't last very long. Well, this, this kite, I've had a kite last up to 20 years plus because of proper maintenance, proper just getting out, flying it properly. It loves the wind, it just loves it. This one just looks great, it looks amazing. This is the black color. Um, there's also like a sunset and a rainbow version that you can get, you know, this the wind died down. So I'm gonna bring it up a little bit higher, try and get it out into that wind window. Again, if I wanna do a left turn, I pull the left string. If I do a right turn, if I wanna do a right turn, I pull the right string towards me. Now, some people do more down type stuff. I do pull it to your chest, right? Pull it in towards you. Now, you can actually do a loop by just holding it a little bit longer, letting that kite go around. Now, the more loops you do, right? That was just four loops. Now I have a cross in my line. You might be able to see it. There's a cross in my line. How do I get that out? I go the opposite direction, two, three, four, and that gets it out. So now I'm back to just two lines, right? So left or right, three, right? And left three. We have some bystanders over here having some fun, little kids. See, even when you do it, you put a smile on a kid's face. It's a lot of fun out at a field, out on a beach. Um, and like you saw, the, the package doesn't take up that much space. So it's great as a carry-on. And it's just, it's so relaxing when you get that good wind. It's great exercise with your arms. If you're a handicapped person, you're in a wheelchair, getting it off the ground may be tough if you're in a low wind environment um, like we were today. But once you find that wind, it is so easy. You can just stay in place. I've seen guys with much smaller kites sit in lawn chairs and just have fun with it. So you'll notice the speed on this is tremendous. Even for its size at five feet, 10 inches, that's a long wingspan. And you see the wind starting to die down now. And you just let the kite come to a landing, right? Now, when the kite is in this position, you can actually take off again. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and attempt another relaunch. Here we go. So with a simple flick of my wrists, right, pulling down to my sides, I was able to relaunch the kite. 
ready to go. And now I'm back in the wind, I'm back up and running, right? Again, really, really fun. I love kiting. Sport kites are the best kites out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this to a landing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to go over to the edge, to the right. I'm just gonna let it drop. Okay, wind didn't wanna do that. So I'm gonna take it to the left and just bring it down and let it drop. And that's how you land a sport kite. We have just landed our kite and are about to disassemble it. Now, remember in our back pocket is the, the line winder. So the line winder is a card. It has a couple grooves in the top and that's where you're gonna put your handles. So the handle straps have a black cord coming off them. It's gonna go right in the middle there. So what you wanna do with two lines, you wanna take your finger and go right in between the two lines and hold it separated. As you bring it down across, you're going to make sure that those stay left and right. The reason for that is because you get what we call ghost wraps. So ghost wraps are just spins in the line that we don't want before we're ready to fly. So we want to take this and control it. And you go over and under, over and under, creating a cross format, right? And you do that all the way down to your kite. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to release that Jacob's knot that we made earlier. So how you do that is you simply give the line a tug down, you'll see that knot come out, and then you'll see where it crosses, that cross point. You can simply take your fingernail and bring that back, and it'll loosen up just like that, right? And you pull that off. Now you wanna be careful with this, make sure it doesn't go too far and then you're gonna pull your other one off. So, here, again, here's our bridle. Here's our lead line that we brought in. And then we're gonna move this knot back, make it a little bit easier for ourselves. Take your fingernail, come over the cross, and pull out that cross. That will loosen up the Jacob's knot so that we can then get the bridle out of position. We have the end of our lines, we bring them over the cross, and then we take our handles and we wrap it around the line winder. That will kind of encapsulate those lines so they don't move. And we take our bungee, come over the middle, into one slot, out of the other slot. And now that's nice and tight, ready for you. And that goes in your back pocket, ready to go in the bag once you're done with the kites. So from there, then what you do is you take off the leg spars. So these leg spars come out. Then we pull out the lead spar. And this lead spar Make sure you don't lose this. This is the easiest one to lose, right here. So this, I will normally put in my back pocket with my line winder so that I know where it is. Again, with this one, the Thunderstruck, we're gonna pull out the center first and then pull that wing into yourself so you can then grab the leading edge grommet and pull the rod out, right? and then just let that loose. That's okay to be loose. And then again, we're gonna take that center, pull it out of the center. There, we go. Oop, there it is. Sometimes they're a little tough. They're supposed to be that tough. They're not supposed to be loose on you at all. Just release the rest of the kite. You won't damage it. And then if you have trouble getting it out of the grommet, 
go in and just try and give it a little twist and that will help it out nicely. So now I have my two lowers. I have my upper spar from before. And now, here we go. So the cool thing of this kite, you don't have to break it down from its leading edge. You can leave it the long length and the bag is actually designed to open up so that you can fit it in. Um, for me, I like the lower design, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pull out the bungees here, right? Those went into the little grommets at the beginning, and I'm just gonna simply, so right in here, you'll see the fold. That's where those two rods come out of each other, and you'll feel it with your fingernail. You'll feel the bigger rod. You wanna hold that with your thumb, give it a nice pinch, and then just simply work this rod out of position. So you see how that release there. So make sure you give yourself a good, I don't know, half an inch of space. And that way you can fold up the wing, right? So we're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Hold that bigger spar. We're gonna just work it out. You saw that one was nice and easy. Fold it up. And there we go. And what I do is I take these legs and I stick them inside laying down. And then all you do is you just roll it up nice and tight. You won't hurt the material at all. This is actually the best way to store the material. And this simply goes in the bag and you're ready to fly your next kite. I hope you enjoyed this instructional video series. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. If you get a chance, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Thank you.